All right, sounds today, hertz and decibels. Not decimals, decibels. So when we're looking at sound, I mean, sound is, it's fast, right? It's fast for us, right? So, but it's slow compared to light. So when we're looking at sound, and let's make sure we have our, make sure we have our pen. Maybe we'll, we'll do yellow. So if you look at the speed of sound, and it's measured in Mach, like Mach 1, Mach 1, and you may have heard this with fighter jets, right, is the speed of sound. And the speed of sound is 700, 761 miles per hour. But when you're thinking of the speed of light, the speed of light is 186,000 miles per, not hour, second. So you can see how fast light is compared to sound. So we have fighter jets that can go over Mach 1. We've, and when we have those type of jets, we say, well, we broke the speed, uh, the sound barrier, right? Mach 1. And Mach 2 would be twice the speed of sound. And Mach 3 would be three times the speed of sound. And what do you think Mach 4 would be? Four times the speed of sound. Excellent. All right, so let's get a clear page going. So right here, this is the fastest jet fighter today. And this is the MiG-25 Foxbat. So let's write that down. Let's use blue. Why not? So this is a Russian jet. I'll put it over here, Russian jet. A Russian jet fighter. The MiG, and you're probably familiar with the name MiG. It's not an equal sign. The MiG-25 Foxbat. And it can go... Mach 3. So it's going 3, actually 3.2, actually. Let's be a technical here, right? So Mach 3.2. So it can go over three times the speed of sound. It's very fast. Now, just because it's fast doesn't mean it's one of the best fighters out there. But I don't want to go deep into fighter jets. I'll have another video on that anyway. So what it's doing, what the sound is doing, is it's moving in waves. You know, like this. Everyone's having a little wave. And it's like a sine wave. And when you do trigonometry, you'll hear about sine waves. On the calculator, it looks like sin, the sin button. It's actually sine, sine wave. So sound, the length of the sound wave is going to determine its frequency, and that's measured in hertz. So I'll go over hertz first, and then we'll talk about decibels. So again, this is the Russian MiG-25 Foxbat. One of the fastest fighters today. It wasn't the fighters the, the fastest ever, though. Here's one of the fastest fighter jets ever. This is the SR-71 Blackbird. It's not in service anymore, but it went Mach 3.4. So let's get our blue. We'll put it over here in the mountains of the Rockies here. So this is the SR-71. SR-71 Blackbird. Nice looking plane. And again, it went Mach 3.4. Now, we have spacecraft that are not fighter jets that can go over that Mach, right? We have the, the X-15, for example. It was an, the X-15 was an experimental craft that went Mach 6. Again, the more Mach you put into a plane, the less chance of having a human pilot because there's only so much Mach we can take uh, before we run into problems. So, you know, we have spacecraft that can go a lot faster than that. All right, so let's get to Hertz. All right, we'll write the word Hertz over here. And we'll talk we, with Hertz. There's kilohertz. There's megahertz. And there's even further than that, gigahertz. So we'll say one Hertz. A thousand hertz is a kilohertz. A million hertz is a megahertz. And a billion would be a gigahertz. So that's just the levels. And I talked about this when I talked about radio, if you want to look at the ra um, video on radio waves. So if we, uh, so again, if I made a sine wave, or if I made a sound wave, well, let's just make a sound wave, I'm trying to make it even. Let's just do something like that for now. So. The top of the wave from one top to the next top is the wavelength. Wavelength, don't forget the T. 
And it's usually used with the Greek letter lambda. So this letter here is lambda. Greek letter. So lambda is the wavelength. And the wavelength is, again, dealing with frequency. So hertz is measured, sound is measured in hertz, and it's dealing with frequency. So let me write this down. The number of number of waves per second is the frequency. So if we went from this wave to that wave in one second, we're doing one wave per second, one hertz. If we're going from this wave all the way to, let's say, that wave in one second, you're doing more waves per second. So again, the more waves per second, the higher the frequency. Simple as that. So again, the waves, the number of waves per second is the frequency. And we use the term hertz for that. You'll also hear the term pitch, which we'll talk about in a minute, the pitch. So let's talk about, clear this up. Let's look, think about radio, for example. Let's clear this out. Clear this out. Go back if you need to. So we have AM radio and FM radio, if anyone uses radio anymore. So AM radio has a hertz of 540 kilohertz all the way to 1700 kilohertz. So what this is saying, 540, it's 540 kilohertz. It's talking about the number of waves per second. And when you tune into your radio, let's say you tune into 1010 winds, which is a New York radio station, you're tuning into a frequency of 1,010 kilohertz. So that's the frequency. And AM is amplitude modulation. Now, very important, there's going to be a difference between sound waves and radio waves. And I'll talk about that very soon. Now, FM... FM has a higher frequency. It goes from 88 megahertz all the way to about 108 megahertz. And you could find this on your radio. Just turn, tune into the radio. Try to get 109. When you're not going to have it. So again, you can notice that FM has a much higher frequency than AM. And one thing you should know is the higher the frequency, the higher the frequency, this is common sense too, the higher the energy. Higher the frequency, the higher the energy. And more information can be stored. So you can store a lot more information. You can modulate a lot more sound information on FM than you can on AM. So FM radio sounds better, especially with music. The only drawback is that the higher the frequency, the higher the frequency, the lower the distance. So AM radio can travel a lot further than FM radio. So there's a drawback on it. Now, here's the problem now. We can't hear 540 kilohertz. So we're not listening to radio waves. We're actually listening to the sound wave. So the radio wave, when you're hearing on the AM radio or FM radio or whatever you're hearing, it's just the sound wave that is coded on top of the radio wave. So that's what they call modulated. They're modulating the sound. So I mean, I want to clear this out. If you need to write anything, you can go back. I'll just clear it out. Let's look at the human ear. The human ear. The human hearing range, human hearing, we can hear about 20 hertz. Now this is depending on the individual. All the way, perhaps, to 20,000 hertz. As you get older, this changes con considerably. Now, if you think about your dog, your dog can hear much higher frequencies. Your dog can hear maybe this much. Think about that a lot more. So when you hear those uh, dog whistles, your dog's hearing it, but we're not. 
Now, 20,000 hertz, if you're a certain age, you're not hearing 20,000 hertz. They usually have it like this. And this is what they have done experiments for. Under the age 24, if you're under 24, you could probably hear 17,000 kilohertz, uh, hertz, not kilohertz. If you're under 30, but not over 24, you should be able to hear. See how it goes down as we age? And these aren't exact, but this is close to it. So if you ever do these hearing tests, and they're very available um, online. You can test it. I've tested it with my students many times. They can hear things that I can't. So if you're under 50, if you're closing in on 50, it goes down as we age. So this is just a rough estimate on what we can hear as we age. Now, the, the great uh, wax moth, right? It's a, the wax moth. The wax moth, think about what the wax moth can hear. Well over that, it's 300,000 kilohertz. Sorry, I meant hertz, not kilohertz. So the wax moth can hear much, much more of a range than we can. So there's a whole world of sound out there that we are, we're not hearing. Our dog is probably hearing it, a bear and the deer and insects, but we're just not hearing it. All right. So let's make sure we understand something here. When we're talking about hertz, we're talking about the frequency of the wave. So when we have a lot more waves per second, the frequency is higher. So let's clear that out. Change the color. Let's use purple. Why not? So again, we're not dealing with this, the volume now. We're just dealing with the pitch. We're dealing with the frequency. So you can see here, there's a lot more waves on the bottom per second than the top. So this bottom one would have a high frequency. And this one would have a low frequency. So think of low frequencies as someone who has a deep voice, a deep voice, like Lurch from the Adams Family. You have this deep voice. So Lurch has you ring that deep voice that's low frequency and then like mickey mouse right he has that high voice hello how are you that's a high frequency but it has nothing to do with volume now you can have a deep voice that's louder and when we're dealing with volume we're dealing with decibels so now that'll be and by the way if we're thinking about musical instruments let's change the color let's use let's use that color why not so the middle c on the piano the middle c has hertz about 256 hertz. Whereas if you go up to A, you'll hit 440 hertz. And again, you can go lower than middle C, and lower will have a deeper bass sound. Like, of course, we know in, in musical instruments, the bass has a deeper sound than the guitar. So it has a lower frequency doesn't mean you can't make it louder. So just keep that in mind. So again, hertz with frequency, the number of waves per second, and we use the wavelength as lambda, and decibels, which we're going to talk about next, is the volume. So let's look at talk about decibels. And here's a good chart on decibels if you just look at it. So, and with, this is only compared to human hearing, right? So we're saying zero based on human hearing all down here. So, and, you know, basically a whisper is 20 decibels. So that gives you an idea, like 20 decibels is nothing. So we use decimals and they write it like this. And let's, let's, maybe we'll stick with that color. So decibels, DB. It's easy to remember, decibel. So when we have 20 decibels, that's safe hearing. It's just right over here. It's a whisper. It's breathing. Light rain, 40 jackhammer though that's when we get into things like 90 decibels so you know that 90 decibels is probably not pleasant then again it all depends on what you're hearing if you're hearing noise or you're hearing sound you may be at a rock concert maybe you're listening to metallica or alice in chains or black sabbath if they ever reunite so at a rock concert 110 decibels if you're at a met game or a yankee game or wherever you can have a roaring crowd of 120 decibels and look at a fighter jet right the 
blackbird. That's dangerous. So in general, here are some safe things they say. Over 70 decibels, over a long period of time, and a lot of rock musicians will testify to this, over a long period of time can damage your ears. You know, a lot of rock musicians now, they're realizing they should put earplugs in their ears. And even when you go to a rock concert, you should put earplugs in your ears also. When you're young, you don't even think about it. But when you're old and you go to those concerts, you'll hear, you'll feel it. So over 70 decibels over a long period of time can damage your ears. And they say over 120 can do some significant damage. So if you're at a cheering crowd... And, you know, depending on how that crowd level is, that could be dangerous depending on how long you're there. So let me give a little chart. We'll change it. We'll, we'll use black. Why not? So 85 decibels. Scientists think that eight hours on that level should be safe. But at 100 decibels, it goes down to 15 minutes. So just think of the drop as it went up. Just think about that. And 110 decibels, one minute. So what's the takeaway from here? Use ear protection, especially if you're going to see fighter jets. Fighter jets, fighter pilots have ear protection. So if you're going to a fireworks show, and again, it depends on your vicinity, how close you are, and so forth. Okay. All right, let's clear this out and let's review. By the way, here's the wax moth enjoying his frequency range, which is extremely higher than our frequency range, so he's hearing things we just can't hear, his own little music. But just to review, again, we talked about two things, and let's use yellow. We talked about frequency. Frequency, and maybe we should change the color to red. And when we're dealing with frequency, we're talking about hertz. And we're talking about the waves per second. Like we said, the waves per second. And it was measured in hertz. And we used the Greek symbol lambda. And we remember we said the higher the frequency, the more waves per second. When you talked about when radio is that the radio waves, the higher the frequency, the uh, more information can be stored on it but it goes a shorter distance. And radio, just to remember, radio is part of the electromagnetic spectrum. They have the longest wavelengths of light. Remember, radio is light, and I talked about this in the radio video. And it goes all the way to gamma, which is light also, and gamma has extremely high frequencies, gamma. And then we talked about decibels, our little decibel. We said dB for decibels, and that's dealing with volume. The volume, how loud it is. Where in frequency we're talking about the pitch, different notes like a C or a D and so forth. Think of the length for frequency. Think of the height for volume. So we'll do one more chart. Let's make one. Let's use red. Eh, stick with red. Why not? So we have this long wavelength right here. Let's just say that's like this, long wavelength. So if we're talking about the wavelength, that's the frequency. If I change the color to blue, this the height is the amplitude. Amplitude, and that is the loudness. That's the volume we're talking about. So you can have a wave like this, let's say number one, but number two, let's say it was just higher. Look at that. Same wavelength, I'm trying to get the same wavelength, but you notice it's much higher so it'll have a higher volume. And we'll just finish it off like that. You get the idea. So again, length for frequency, height for volume. All right.